In the last video, we looked at how to do caching with Django, Django Risk Framework, and Redis as our cache backend. And we saw how to take a view set such as this one and override a method like the list method, and then cache the response for that particular method or that view using the cache page decorator. And that decorator takes as parameters the timeout, so how long you want to cache the response for, as well as potentially a key prefix. And that can be used to distinguish different cache areas in a multi-site setup, as it says here. Now in this video, we're going to explore something a little bit more advanced, and that's these vary headers. So these can be used to control caching based on request headers. So imagine a request coming into the Django application. It might have some specific headers that are specific to users, and you can control the caching behavior based on those headers. We're going to see an example of that very soon. And we're going to look at caching pages where the response depends on the user that's sending the request. Now, before we get started, if you're finding the content useful and you want to support the channel, check this coffee page out. And thanks very much to everybody that supported the channel on coffee. I'm trying my best to keep these videos as regular as possible and also free on YouTube. So thanks again to everybody that's contributed to that. And let's get started in this video looking at the vary headers and caching in Django. Now what I'm going to do is go to our api.http file and this was the file that we used to send HTTP requests to our API. And we have this one here, it's a get request to get all orders that a user has got in the database. So the authenticated user is determined by this authorization request header and the user's JWT or JWT token is part of that header. So if I send this request, what I'm going to get back is a response with all of the orders tied to user1. So you can see the order ID here and so on, but all of these orders belong to user one. And that's because that user is the one that has this bearer token. Now, if you want to know more about the authentication, check out the previous video on that. It should be appearing on the screen. What I want to do is actually change the user that's making this request. So what I can do is go up to the API slash token call and we have the admin user. I'm going to change that to our other user, which was John Doe. If we send that request, we get back an access token, as you can see here. And what I'm going to do is copy this and we can then bring that into the bearer tokens in the slash orders view. So let's replace this with our other bearer token and we can then send this request and notice now that we get back the orders for user two. Now, can you imagine the problem that caching might cause here? If we close this and go back to views.py, let's go down to our orders view set. And that was one we created in some recent videos. What we're going to do is we're going to override that list method again. So actually, let's just copy what we had from here. I'm going to copy that and we can bring it down into the order view set. And now that we have that, let's just replace the key prefix and we're going to use order list for this one. So in a view set, the list method is responsible for returning the list of items attached to this query set. Now I mentioned a problem and the problem is going to be that the first response on this list page at the URL slash orders that you can see here is going to be cached. And then if we send the same request with a different token, in other words, a different authenticated user, it's going to return the response for the other user. Let's see that in action just now. What I'm going to do is just save this and let's go back to here and send the request with the John Doe user. So we get back all of the orders that are attached to user two. But if I was to then replace this token with the token for user one, and let's send this request again, Notice that the response contains the orders that are for user two. So what's happened here is that the response has been cached and because it was user two that sent the first request to the slash orders endpoint, that was cached because we now have the cache page decorator on the list page. And remember the cache page decorator will cache the response for every distinct URL. And it's the same URL here, slash orders. The different behavior is on the back end where it looks up the authenticated user. And that means that for subsequent requests, we get the wrong response. So what we need here is to distinguish between the different users that are sending the request and only cache based on the request headers. And we're going to look at the authorization header. So this is very important because we don't want to be sending the wrong response with a different user's orders because we've set up caching incorrectly. Now Django has a specific decorator that we're going to look at. So let's go to the REST framework documentation. Now, when we use the cache with the API view and the view sets, we've already seen the cache page decorator. But there's another one here called vary on headers and also a vary on cookie decorator as well. And we can use these in the same way as we use the cache page header, just by wrapping it in the method decorator. So let's copy this just now because it's exactly what we want. We're going to use the authorization header and we can then go back to VS Code and let's go to views.py. Now we've wrapped this list page here in a cache page decorator. But we also want to use vary on headers and that's something we need to import at the top. And I'm going to grab the import from the REST framework documentation. So let's copy this line of code 
and we can paste that in just underneath cache page. And we can remove vary on cookie because we're not going to use that. So we're going to use vary on headers and we're passing one header to this and that's the authorization header. So what is this going to do? Let's reference the Django documentation now. So we're on this page now on using vary headers and these define which request headers a cache mechanism should take into account when it builds the cache key. An example here is that if the contents of a page depend on the user's language preference, that page will vary on language. Now I want to read this paragraph here. So by default, Django's cache system will create the cache keys using the requested fully qualified URL. So for example, any query parameters are going to appear in the cache key. And that means that every request to that same URL is going to use the same cached version. And that's regardless of differences in things like user agent or in cookie or language preferences. It will just use the same response. And we saw that with our request to slash orders. The problem there is that if the page produces different content based on some difference in request headers, such as a cookie or a language or a user agent, then you will need to use the vary header to tell caching mechanisms that the page output depends on those things. Now, the one we're using is authorization. And the reason for that is because we're going to have a different response based on the value here of the authorization header. So each user will have their own bearer token. And that means the response is going to be cached differently if we use the vary on headers decorator here and use the authorization header. Now, before we test this, what I'm going to do is just stop the Django server here. And I'm going to use the Docker PS command and we're going to flush all of the keys from this Redis container. So what we can do is run docker exec dash ti and we're going to connect to the container and run bash. And then we can connect to the Redis instance. So Redis CLI and it was the database number one. So if we look at all the keys in this database at the moment, you can see there's a couple of these and there's a command called flush DB that we can use. And then after we've done that, you can see we have no keys in the database. So we've essentially cleared the cache now. We can exit out of the Redis CLI and go back to the terminal. We're going to run the Django server. Now what we can do is go back to api.http and this time we're going to send that same request using that same bearer token. And we're going to get back the responses for user with the ID of two. And if we scroll down here, you can see that all of these have user ID of two. So we've got back the response and that is now being cached in Redis. If we close this off, what I'm going to do is replace this token with the token for user one. So I've now replaced that token with the one for user one. And when we send the request, notice now that we get back the correct orders for user one. Now what's happened here is that unlike before, we're getting a different response for each user. And that's because of the vary on headers decorator. It's going to look at the HTTP request. It's going to look at the authorization header. And if the value is different, it's not going to use a cached version. Instead, it's going to return a response and cache that specific response based on the authorization header. So the caching is then user specific because of that very header. And once it's cached, any subsequent requests that have the same value for this key are going to use that cache to return their responses. So I hope that makes sense. That is the purpose of these very headers. They tell the caching mechanism how to behave if different values are present in the headers. Now, one issue here is that the token used in the authorization header might change quite frequently, and that might result in a lot of different caches being created here for the same user. So that depends on the lifetime of your JWT token. When that token expires, it's going to be recycled. And if you go to settings.py, I've added a setting here for simple JWT. And for my access token, it's got a lifetime here of 60 minutes, but a lifetime of much less, such as five minutes, is quite common as well. Just remember that every single time this value changes, it's going to create a new entry in the cache and cache the response from this page, and then use that every time we get a request with the same header in the future. So any pages that you have in your application where the response might depend on the authenticated user or the user agent, or it might depend on values that are in a cookie, for example, you may want to use these very headers and Django has these very helpful decorators for specifying how to cache the responses. Now for invalidating these, that's going to be much more difficult than the previous video. And the issue is that the cache key is going to vary based on the JWT access token that's present in the authorization header. So we need to be able to access that token in order to invalidate the correct cache for a given user. But it's not possible to access the request in Django model signals like post save and post delete as we used in the previous video. So you might need to think of a different approach for that because you don't want to invalidate the cache 
for other users. So if a specific user's orders change in this application, we can invalidate the cache for that user, but we need to know which user it is. And we don't want to invalidate the caches for other users whose orders have not changed, if that makes sense. So another option here might be to use some lower level caching in Django, and you could create a key prefix that contains the user's primary key. And that means we can identify the user's key in the Redis database more easily. And we can use that inside a signal alongside something like the cache.delete pattern method that we saw in the previous video. Mm -hmm. So let's quickly look at that. We were taking the cache, calling delete pattern, and we can use the key prefix here. But we could also look for the given user. And the sender here was the product, but in our new order view set, that sender is going to be the order model. So after an order is saved or deleted, if we go to models.py, we can get access to the user to whom that order belongs because there's a foreign key on the model. So inside the signal, all we would need to do is access that foreign key, get the user's primary key from that, and then reference that primary key in this delete pattern. But of course, that relies on the key being created with the user's primary key somewhere in that key. So there's different approaches here, but the key point in this video was just to demonstrate the very own headers decorator in Django. You can use that and pass an HTTP header that's going to be used to control how the caching behaves based on the value of that header. And that allows you to create pair user caching as one example. So if this decorator looks at the authorization header or perhaps the user agent HTTP header, then when the values change for that header, i.e. when a different user sends the request, it's going to then create a cached response and return that response only when it gets a matching header in the future. But for users with a different value for these headers, it's going to create another cached response. So it allows you to create these pair user caches in your database. And that could also be useful for something like a user profile page if you want to fetch a set of user settings, for example. You can very easily cache those, but you want to return the correct settings for a given user. So you would use the very headers in order to do that. So that's all for this video. I hope that makes sense. It's quite a complex topic to explain. And I've tried to use an example from the models that we've been building in this series. So I hope that makes sense. But I am hoping to do many more videos on caching with Django and Redis and also things like Celery. Now you wouldn't use Celery for caching, but it does integrate well with Redis. So I'm looking at adding some videos on that in the near future as well. But in the meantime, thanks very much for watching. If you're enjoying this content, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more. And if you want to support the channel, check this coffee page that we have. There's links in the description and in the pinned comment. And if you have any suggestions for future content, drop them in the comments as well. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next video.